phrasal verbs in English. It seems like I could do an entire channel on phrasal verbs in English. And I know it's super tough to understand all of the phrasal verbs native English speakers use because we use them so easily. We don't even realize they are actually hard for other people learning the language. As I've said in other videos I've made for phrasal verbs, the more you listen, the more you read, the more you will understand them. I don't think you should ever try to memorize phrasal verbs, but if you want to see more videos about phrasal verbs, I have a whole playlist. Today's phrasal verb is bring up, and this comes from a conversation that we were having in the new Discord server for this channel for members. So if you would like to become a member, I'll leave a link right up there, but it's just a place for me to talk to people who have become members for this channel. And sometimes in our conversations, ideas for videos will come up, come up. I just used a phrasal verb without even really knowing it. And I would like to welcome Alexander, a new member to the channel. Thanks so much for joining. If you would like more information on becoming a member, there is that link but you get new videos a little earlier. You get special videos sometimes just for members. And of course you have access to the Discord server. And what makes these phrasal verbs so difficult is you might know how to define the verb bring. It's, it's a pretty big one in English. It's pretty difficult. But when you use it with bring up, it totally changes the meaning. The first way English speakers will use the phrasal verb bring up is to talk about how a child is raised, how a child is treated by their parents or possibly even guardians. As a teacher in the United States, I will often use this with my students, the term parents and guardians, because not all of my students are brought up by their parents. Some are brought up by guardians and a guardian is someone who most likely has legal custody and custody with people. We don't say ownership of people. That's not very cool, but we will say custody. So it's their responsibility. They are responsible for those children that they are bringing up or that they are raising. Some children, of course, are brought up in a very nice environment, a very loving house, a nice neighborhood with people who care for them. That little ding was, I uh, had a email from somebody from my school. On Wednesdays, I work from home and this is my lunch break, but somebody still wanted to send me an email. You might also hear the term legal guardian. Sometimes grandparents can become the legal guardian of their children's children. If you would like to practice some shadowing, here's a sentence. They are bringing up four children in the household. They are bringing up four children in the household. So this might be a couple, maybe a married couple, maybe a husband and a wife, and they are raising children in that house. We sometimes use the term single mother in English. That means a mother who doesn't have a husband to help her for some reason. Maybe the husband left her. Maybe the husband passed away, which is a nice way to say died. So now I'm going to use the phrasal verb in the past. And here's another sentence you can use to shadow. She was a single mother who brought up four children by herself. She was a single mother who brought up four children by herself. If you find this type of shadowing exercise helpful, could you leave me a comment in the comment section and I will try to do more of these. Another way we use bring up or brought up in the past is when we talk about a topic or a subject, often in conversation and often when it's not easy to talk about. One uncomfortable topic to bring up, especially to your boss, is maybe you want to raise. You want more money each week. Maybe you have a meeting with your boss later in the day and you say to yourself, 
I need to bring up a raise to him or her when I meet with them later in the afternoon. I need to bring that up. Or maybe you talk to your boss and they haven't said anything. So you might say to them, hey, uh, last week I brought up how I needed a raise. Have you given that any thought? Or maybe you lent some money to your friend. You let a friend borrow some money and now you need to bring it up because they haven't paid you back. The next time you talk with that friend, you might say, hey, I hate to bring this up, but I lent you $100 last month. You still haven't paid me back. So we often use brought up when it's something we need to talk about and it's uncomfortable. Have you ever heard the term elephant in the room? We sometimes use that for when two people know a subject or a topic has to be brought up, but they don't know how to quite say it. I hate to bring up the elephant in the room, but you owe me some money. Can we talk about that? When are you gonna pay me back? So it's a new day, I'm at work. I'd like to get here as early as possible. The sun isn't even up yet. I think I'll do the next couple examples from my classroom today. The next way we use bring up is a little tricky and it has to do with law. And anytime you discuss law in English, it can get a little tricky. But if somebody commits a crime, and that's a verb you might not use often, commit a crime, they do something bad, charges could be brought against them. Charges could be brought up against them. They could be brought up on charges. So let's say, someone steals something from a store. They have committed a crime. The district attorney, it's a very fancy name, but each city has a district attorney, basically, and they look at recent crimes and they might bring charges against somebody or charges might be brought up against somebody. So the district attorney could look at the recent crime, think that this person might have done that, they might have stolen something, so charges could be brought up against that person. I tried not to go into the legal stuff too much, but just know that brought up, brought up on charges, is sometimes used. In my opinion, that last one was kind of hard. This one, not so bad. Brought up, can also be used with technology and a screen, maybe your phone or your computer. For instance, I just got finished teaching a class about history, government, and I teach on Zoom. I teach remotely. I do remote learning with my students. And one of my students wondered, what does a ballot in Maine look like? And we're talking about the elections and a ballot is something you would write on to say which person you want to win, maybe president or senate. And I was able to bring up a picture of a ballot on my screen. And I was able to show them that remotely and they were able to see picture of a ballot because I was able to bring it up on my screen. And just as a reminder, like you could literally bring up your ballot if you are voting. It's often a piece of paper and you may bring it up to a person to have your vote counted. But then that's literally doing it, literally taking your piece of paper to a place, bringing it up to a person. Whereas these phrasal verbs are not literally being done. 
you're not literally bringing up something on your screen. It's what makes these phrasal verbs so difficult. Maybe you are in a new town and you're looking for directions and you're what we call a visual learner. You learn best by seeing it, not an auditory learner. An auditory learner learns best by hearing it. Maybe you're looking for directions and you ask a person, hey, how do I get to the store? And they're like, oh, you can go here, go here. And you may say, oh, could you bring it up on your phone? I learn better when I can see it. That person could bring up the directions on their phone so you can look at it. In the last way, I hope your brain isn't hurting too much from all of these phrasal verbs. Bring up, you can use that when you're talking about vomiting or puking. Let's say you are looking at a gross picture. It is near Halloween when I'm filming this, and a lot of people like to show gross things during Halloween. Maybe somebody has a picture of a spider. Maybe you're nervous of spiders. I don't want to use anything too gross. And you may say to that person, oh, I can't look at that picture. It'll bring up my lunch. And if you say it'll bring up my lunch, that means you will puke or you will vomit. My classroom is literally right next door to the bathrooms. And where I teach middle school, sometimes walking into the bathrooms, they can smell pretty badly. And so I may walk in one time and have to walk right out. And I might say, oh, if I walk in there, I'm going to bring my lunch up. So it smells so bad. Teenagers, 12, 13 year olds in the bathroom, you know, you may have to stay out of there for a little while. Or what I do is I go find another bathroom that won't bring my lunch up. I hope those five ways were pretty clear. I'm going to have my lunch now. Hopefully my lunch won't come up or be brought up from any nasty smells or nasty pictures. But I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you learned a little something. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys next time. Wait, I forgot to say, hey, right up there, if you're looking for more English, is a video I did about water and words you can use while you're drinking. And below that is a video I did a couple weeks ago about how I had to quarantine after being exposed to the coronavirus. Now, hope you enjoyed this. See you next time.